Hi, my name is Bridget Kelly. I'm a physician assistant here at Aesthetic Enhancements for Dr. Armando Soto. Um, this is a continuation of our series about what kind of skincare treatments are most appropriate for people in different decades of their lives. Um, so last week we covered the 20s, this week we're kind of going into the 30s. So a lot of the things that apply for the 20s continue to apply for your 30s. Um, those are things such as prevention, so your sunscreen, um, making sure that you're not having any extreme weight gains or weight losses, kind of maintaining a, um, as steady a weight as you can. I think that um, your skincare program becomes much more important in your 30s, even more so than in your 20s, because that is really when um, the aging process starts to accelerate a little bit. It's when we start to lose a little bit more of our collagen each year, and when we also start to lose a little bit of that natural volume in our face. So anything that we can do from a preventative standpoint to kind of slow that process is going to work in our best interest. Um, so the biggest product that I recommend to my patients in their 30s is some sort of retinol or retin-A type product. We covered this briefly in the 20s. Again, I think it becomes more so important in your 30s. Um, that Retin-A is the only clinically proven product to actually stimulate your body's own collagen growth. So it boosts the metabolism and the cell turnover rate of your skin. It also inhibits a specific protein that causes the breakdown of your collagen fibers. So not only is it um, helping to repair your skin, but it's also helping to prevent some of that breakdown that happens. Um, the biggest complaint with people with retinol or retin-A is that it irritates their skin. It makes them dry, flaky. Um, a lot of times this is because people start out on a dose that may be a little bit too potent for them and they start off a little too quickly with the product. So we usually recommend to our patients that they start at the lowest dose possible. Even if you think your skin is pretty tolerant, it's not going to hurt to let it get adjusted slowly. So we usually start the, um, the Retin-A at a lower strength and have you taper that up through the weeks. So the first week you only may use that one night, the second week you may go up to two nights, the third week three nights, and so on and so forth, giving your skin time to get a little bit more used to that. So if you do it that way, it does help to prevent some of that irritation that you can get. Also a lot of dermatologists that recommend it for specific conditions such as acne may recommend that you um, do not use a moisturizer with it. I think again, if you're using a good moisturizer with your Retin-A, you're still going to get the benefits that Retin-A gives you, um, but it's going to help to cut back on some of those side effects. So again, I think Retin-A is one of the easiest things that we can do at home, um, as well as sunscreen, of course, to protect our skin. Another myth with Retin-A is that you can't use it um, through the summertime or when you're going to be out in the sun. Um, and that's not the case and actually that's an important time to use it because that protein that breaks down collagen is actually stimulated with UV rays. So you're actually, um, you know, of course out in the sun going to have an acceleration of that collagen breakdown. Um, so if you use it through the summer, you're fine to do that. You just want to make sure that you're wearing your sunscreen and being very adamant about including it in your daily routine. And if you are at the beach or working out in your yard, that you're reapplying it every two hours. And there shouldn't be any issue with continuing to use the Retin-A. 30s may also be a time where we do start to show signs of our past sins. So if we didn't take care of our skin so much in our teens and in our 20s, we may be starting to show little signs of sun damage such as, you know, some darker areas in our skin, um, maybe some broken capillaries across our cheeks or around our nose. Those are all signs of um, previous damage. So a lot of patients will say, oh no, I wear my sunscreen every day. And it's great that you do now, um, but maybe in the past or even when you were a child, some of that damage was done and this is a time that we can take care of it. So um, IPL, intense pulse light, photofacial, all names for the same thing. Um, and that is a 
treatment that is a specific wavelength of light that targets um, both the browns and the reds in your skin. So it's FDA approved for the treatment of rosacea, um, but it's also approved for hyperpigmentation. So that is a treatment that's been around forever and continues to be an excellent treatment um, because it works. And basically it works to lighten some of that sun damage and also help with broken capillaries or general redness. So IPL is definitely a good just skin maintenance when you're getting into your 30s or even onward from there. Um, of course, same as in your 20s, you can do those chemical peels to lighten, tighten, and brighten. Um, that's something that you can do while you're maintaining the Retin-A on your own at home to kind of get a little boost, a little increase in your exfoliation. Your makeup will go on smoother. It does have some lightening properties for pigmentation. Um, so that's also an excellent treatment for people who might be a little bit darker complected that can't do something like the photo facial. Um, the next step up from that would be laser. So if you're really starting to show a lot of skin damage, um, such as a lot of wrinkling, a lot of textural changes, and um, some pigmentation issues, then doing something like a general resurfacing laser, um, even if you do that once or twice a year, um, will help to get rid of a lot of that and to also stimulate your collagen production um, and really kind of give your skin a nice glow and again, help to prevent further um, breakdown of that collagen. This is also the age where patients are starting to maybe show a little bit of volume loss and that really depends on the person. It depends on, again, if you've had a lot of shifts in your weight, um, if you've been pregnant and gained a lot and lost a lot, then you may start to notice some of the dark circles under your eyes, a little bit of hollowness. That's not just from lack of sleep. Um, it is also um, from loss of volume um, and one of the first places that that starts to show in our 30s is in the tear trough area and even in this um, medial part of the cheek. So you might start to look a little tired in through this area. You may also start to get a little bit of downward displacement of those cheeks where it starts to show a little bit of that nasal labial fold. Now it doesn't hurt, of course, to wait until you're a little older to do things like the fillers, but if you want to catch it early and require less product and see more of an improvement, plus prevent further signs of that volume loss and that um, fold effect, then you can start with doing very small amounts of filler in your 30s or early 40s. Um, and that's something, again, that if done very conservatively and in the, the right places can look extremely natural. No one would ever even know that you had anything done. They might say that you look well rested um, or that you just don't age and no one has to know. So again, doing small amounts of these things early just help to basically maintain the look of the skin and keep everything very natural looking. Um, Botox, of course, if you're starting to see those pesky frown lines, crow's feet, um, forehead wrinkles, even when you're not making those faces. So of course, anytime you frown or lift or smile, you're going to see those lines. But if you're starting to see those lines when you're getting your hair done at the hairdresser or doing your hair in the bathroom and you're not making those faces, then that's a time that you might want to start considering doing the Botox. And again, that doesn't hurt to wait, but if you do those things earlier, um, then you're gonna see a little bit more of an improvement and you're gonna prevent those lines from getting deeper in the future. A lot of patients will say, well, I don't wanna do Botox because that's something that I'm gonna have to consistently do. And that's true. But again, once you start and you keep up with the Botox, then it's, and especially if you're doing good skincare in between, such as the Retin-A, then the effects of the Botox are gonna start lasting longer and longer for you um, and um, you're not going to need it as frequently plus a lot of times those lines that you were starting to see completely disappear um, and you never even have to get them in the first place so again prevention is key I think um, in your 30s 
that is the best thing for you to do. Um, and the other message that I would give, again, is just small amounts of things done early, not going overboard um, and looking very natural and just maintaining your age is probably one of the best ways to go. So I hope that helps out a little bit. Those are some of the things that we have to offer in that decade. And again, um, a lot of the things in the 20s apply to the 30s as well. So if you haven't seen that video, you can kind of backtrack and watch that. Um, and stay tuned because we'll be talking about your 40s. Thanks a lot.